Rivers, who are playoff bound, looking to make it two in a row against a Riders team that is hoping to bounce back after a loss on Labor Day Monday. And, of course, that will start with quarterback Cody Fajardo on the road. Yeah, and that's offense for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders that over the last two games has put up over 800 net yards. However, they're one and one. The one win versus BC. Cody Fajardo led them to that out in BC in the West Coast. But the loss against the Bombers. That has been the kryptonite for Cody Fajardo. Zach Kolaris and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Kolaris, of course, 23 and 3 in the regular season as the starter and 12 and 1 as the bomber starter here at IG Field. I've got some friends out in the crowd. They texted me and said this is the best atmosphere they've ever seen for a CFL regular season game. That's the vibe here at IG Field, ready to go, sold out, 33,000 in attendance for a Banjo Bowl, and we are underway. Second leg of the CFL on TSN, triple header. Janarian Grant back in the lineup, and he's got the ball. He'll take it back up to the 20, out to the 25, all the way out past the 30, and a solid return for Janarian Grant, and that is where the Winnipeg Blue Bombers offense will go to work with Zach Kolaris at the helm. Yeah, I mentioned his win-loss record 12-1 here at IG Field as the starter for the Bombers. He has the Saskatchewan Rough Riders number. He's come from behind this year. They've won with a lead, finding different ways to win week to week. Last couple of games, just squeaking out victories. Two points in each of the last two, but a couple more victories into the wing column. 11-1, and 6-0 and oh versus the West. And they will start on their own 37. Brady Oliveira stands in to the right of his quarterback. Kolaris wants to throw here. He does, lunging out and hauling it in. Drew Wolitarski, and a nice catch to get this game going. Nine yards for number 82. Go to play action. You know both teams will want to establish the run. Brady Oliveira has leads the league, but play action right out of the gate in the very first play for Kolaris, and then hesitates a second, and Wolitarski over the middle for his first catch of the night. Second in short situation, Dakota Prukop time, as he will get called in here. He's going to step back, and he wants to throw, and he's going to throw, looking for Getsky down the field, broken up by Nick Marshall. What a play defensively in the early stages of this game. Really is tracking the ball down. Nick Marshall's got three interceptions. He was trying to get there to make it number four on the season, but he falls off of his short coverage, that short, short zone, and gets underneath the throw from Nick Dembski. He had a big touchdown over the top on Labor Day, on the Labor Day weekend. Likely less creative this time around for Prukop on third down, needing a yard. He'll keep it and push ahead. And some pushing and shoving at the edge of that pile, but he'll have enough. Should note it was Sean McGuire last year in this game. Short yardage quarterback. He had three touchdowns in this game for the Bombers last year. So expect Prukop to get a number of opportunities. Let's take a look at this Winnipeg offense presented to you by Expedia. Had a great conversation with Jamarcus Hardrick this week. We'll have more on that as this game goes on, but one of the best, if not the best, offensive line intact again for this one. Brady Oliveira leads the league in rushing. I know different teams have played different numbers of games, but Oliveira has come on in the last six. On the Winnipeg 49, near side. That'll be complete to Bailey. Spins at midfield and falls ahead. Some good extra yards picked up there from Rashid Bailey. Nine more for Kolaris. Kolaris just settling in now, getting the play action started. You think of these brand new, beautiful blue jerseys <laughs> I, I i like the alternate I, blues I, I do like the alternate blue and when i look through the stands it is like a tidal wave of blue in the sold out ig field just outstanding atmosphere as you mentioned off the top small sprinkling of green as well as number yeah, yeah. made the trip you'll see a few green in there but a wave of blue and these uniforms they are beautiful looking i do miss the numbers on the front i mean <laughs> at this stage of the season we pretty much know anybody everybody anyway but Big W on the front stands for win this season as they've got 11 yes, of them so far. Putting together a pretty solid drive. Prukop comes up, comes up, does what he needed to do. Kolaris back in the game. First and 10 from the opposition 50. 
four receivers wide side right for Kolaris. Fakes a flip underneath. Now out on the run. Dumps it off to his running back, Oliveira. Oliveira lowers the shoulder. And that's more than enough for a first down as he gets Brady Oliveira involved. AC Leonard's an outstanding athlete at defensive end, but he loses contain to Zach Kolaris around the edge, who's doing a real nice job this year of throwing on the run. It's not a deep throw, it's a high percentage throw, and then Brady Oliveira knows exactly where that first down marker was. Zach Kolaris back to the sidelines again as they sit in a second and near inches situation. Prukop up underneath center, pushes ahead, and Another effective job by the offensive line against this Riders defense. Ricky Miles Brown cracked the starting lineup with the release of Garrett Marino this week with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So he'll start in the middle there at tackle along with Demarcus Christmas. And then Moncrief early on in the game last week was matched up against Nick Dembski. I'll look to see if they do that again. And one of their leaders, leader in knockdowns for that secondary, Roland Milligan. Milligan, the second-year guys, played extremely effectively so far this season. First and ten on the Ryder 38. Kolaris, this time he will hand it off. Oliveira's got a huge chunk down to the 20 before he is wrapped up by Amari Henderson, an 18-yard scamper for the Winnipeg boy. Jeff Gray and Stanley Bryan are going to set this up with some nice blocks off the edge to try and seal and put A.C. Leonard into a chase position off that corner. Nice kick out blocked by Bryant. There's Leonard trying to fight through and get to Oliveira. Can't do it. Oliveira with a new set of downs. Winnipeg Blue Bombers have been shut out in three of their last four first quarters, and they are marching nicely here. Oliveira up the middle and is able to hang on to the ball as he's taken down just shy of the Saskatchewan 15. You mentioned leading the league. I mean, when you, there's different, because of the buys, you'll see some teams have played 12 games, some teams 10, some teams 11. So it's, you know, it's skewed a little bit, but the last six games for Brady Oliveira has been outstanding. And take a look at those numbers, 80 with 446 rushing and catches the ball real nicely. But that 6.2 is nice fat average. Tenth play of the drive for Kolaris. Out to his right again, looking towards the end zone. Got it! Touchdown! It's Dembski as he finds the end zone. And Winnipeg strikes first. Unbanchable. It's going to be a blue tidal wave in this building tonight. If this keeps up, because opening drive right down the field, and Nick Dembski on the dig road. Darnell Sankey trying to go on a blitz, can't get home. And if you give Zach Kolaros more time, he's going to find Dembski. Back-to-back -back touchdowns in Labor Day, and now the Banjo Bowl for number 10. Dembski had a huge Banjo Bowl last year as well. Five catches for 134 yards. Legio out for the extra points. And he misses wide right. And now it'll be brought out on the far side of the field by Mario Alford. And he is wrapped up just shy of the 10 yard line. So Legio had that 55 yard field goal last week. Unable to convert the extra point there. But Nick Dembski in business for the Bombers at the Banjo Bowl. It's been a busy final day on the job for Sarah Orleski. <laughs> Let's send down to the sidelines to find out what's been going on with the Riders for the last 12 hours or so. Certainly wasn't what I was anticipating, Dustin, when I arrived here at the stadium today. But there has been a there has been a some sort of stomach bug that has been making its way through this Riders team, both in terms of players and coaches. I know that it hit head coach Craig Dickinson last night about 9 p.m. and affected him all throughout the night. So they have a number of players that are not feeling good going into this one. So it'll be a storyline that continues on. In fact, they have had to drive in a couple of players from Regina. They have not made it here yet, but that's an ongoing storyline. Only three players have been ruled out for this game, starting halfback Jeremy Clark, fullback James Tuck, and then backup quarterback Mason Fine. Now, I know that the offensive line has been hit hard by this, even though they are playing. They have certainly been feeling the effects of this flu blast.
bug, bug right now. So it's something to keep an eye on as the game goes on. And Craig Dickinson did tell me if there's a lot of pressure on Cody Fajardo, they may switch him out and go with Delegato instead. Great update from Sarah Orleski. Continue to chat with her throughout the day. She'll keep us up to date on that as Mary Alford on the return. And Fajardo heads out on the field down six. Well, we'll see how that offensive line plays. I mean, right now, the Riders bench is still in the sun. That's going to be difficult. Dehydration is the concern when you're trying to play through an illness like they are. So Cody Fajardo can run. We know he's a great runner as well. Jason Moss help him out with play calling and get him on the edges. Maybe run him around a little bit. Give his own offensive line a chance. Fajardo 0 and 5 in his last five against the Bombers, including the postseason. Now he's going to take off on the run. Willie Jefferson is there to wrap him up, but not before a pretty decent gain on first down for this Riders offense. So as Sarah mentioned, the offensive line is intact, the starters, but Part of that illness has gone through that offensive line, so they're going to have to try and stay hydrated. Usually they lose about 10 pounds on a good night. Hickson is the star over the last couple of games. Frankie Hickson in that backfield, but Samuel Emelis is playing for Schaefer Baker. They'll hand it off to Hickson here. He goes straight up the middle and will be stopped short, and that'll bring up third down and a pretty darn good chunk for the Riders. So Keon Schaefer-Baker, who is listed as a starter, will not start. Now, apparently, he is dressed and may be available as the game goes on, depending on how he feels. So Samuel Emelis has got some playing time this year. He's back in line. Of course, Shaq Evans is in game two, and Kyron Moore is fine. He's in game three from his injury. So there are weapons out there for Fajardo. You see how that whole line holds up, especially against Jefferson and Jackson Jeffco. Not the most ideal guys to be defending against when you're not feeling well, or when you're feeling great. Still not two guys <laughs> to have to go up against. Exactly. <laughs> set to kick it away, standing on his 30. He'll let it fly. Janarian Grant waits for it. Back pedals a little bit, watches it bounce over his head. Boy, and that rolls inside the five now. Grant will pick it up, a 63-yard kick. Grant up the sideline. Four set of bounds with 6.43 on the clock. Zach Kalaris, a very nice start. He's four for four for 45 yards and a touchdown. His team is on top at home against the Riders. Bombers about to get the ball back on offense, but here's a look at what they did on their first possession of the game. Yeah, Kolaros going four for four, and this was the fourth with the touchdown throw over the middle. Now, remember, Amari Henderson played corner last week. He's in at halfback now because, as Sarah mentioned, Jeremy Clark is out of the lineup with his illness. So he moves in the halfback, was in chase against Nick Dembski on that touchdown. Nelson LaCombo will play the corner. The team that has scored first has won 11 of the 17 Banjo Bowl so far. Good news for the Bombers as now they hand it off for a push up the middle. And that's Greg McRae for five yards as they try to get him involved in the offense early in this game. Yeah, a few carries, handful of carries for McRae throughout the last few games. He's good on that fly sweep, about an eight yard average when they get him around the edges, get him out in space. Had a 95-yard game with a touchdown a couple weeks ago. Listed in the slot. Listed as a running back for a few games already this season as well. They go back to McCray again, and he's taken down heavily by Roland Milligan. But it was enough for a first down for Winnipeg. Boy, just great timing on this throw from Zach Kolaros, who's such a student of the game and understanding coverage. Quick little pump fake there, and then he puts it right on the money. So there's almost, it's almost impossible to defend. I think that's one thing that, that we don't talk about enough with Zach Kolaris is how much he studies the game and how his, his level of understanding, his football IQ, as we say, just to understand defense is invested early on in his career to learn the nuances of Canadian football and boy is it paid off three receivers out to the right makes the handoff now comes over the middle and that will fall incomplete Nick Marshall in coverage working against Drew Wolitarski and Wolitarski couldn't haul it in 
containment this time there for Saskatchewan because after this fake, Kolaros gets back in the pocket, but he doesn't feel like he can escape because the outside's cut off for him. So he tries to dump it down over the middle and can't get it there. That was DeBeer. Coach O'Shea has thrown a challenge play. You saw Wolitarski come straight off of it Wouldn't and it look for a penalty. The previous play, they believe there was defensive pass interference and on their number 82. The play will be reviewed. Well, the ball was thrown to Wolitarski, so it would be it's a challenge here to see if Nick Marshall helped. They will take another look at it. Here's another look at it for you. Maybe a little tug. We'll find out when we return. CFL on TSN continues tonight with a West Division matchup between the Stampeders and Elks. Tune in at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on TSN. After review by the command center, there is defensive pass interference on Saskatchewan number three. This is a 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mike O'Shea was one for four on challenges prior to that one. Little tug at the shoulder here as we'll get another look at it. Yeah, I mean, wins the challenge. Okay, so there was a pull enough, according to the command center, to overturn it. You can see the right hand just to the, right, uh, to the left of your screen there. I wonder about the challenge though, this early in the game and for 10 yards and a first down deep in your own end. But okay, got one. You got it right. If you win it, yeah. If you win it, you keep your timeout and get a first down. Hand off to Brady Oliveira on that last play. Did not go anywhere. Darnell Sankey, who came into the game with 69 tackles on the year, was there to take him down, tackle for a loss. First of the year for Sankey in that category, who's having a phenomenal season. His first with the Riders. Second and 11 now for Kolaris. They're going to bring some heat. Kolaris backpedaling into the pocket, gets it away just in time, and he's got a completion to Rasheed Bailey, who came back to the ball, and that'll be a first down for Winnipeg. Buck Pierce going deep in the playbook and you just watch the change motion here with Wolitarski from the outside going down the line of scrimmage go ahead and run it and then that crisscrossing of the receivers so that one of them the outside guy is going to make that cut across the middle on the dig route that pre-snap motion so important it confuses the defense will freeze them for a split second 17 yards to Bailey now they hand it off to Oliveira trying to bust through a hole and gets a pretty good chunk on first down up to rate right about midfield on that carry you know back to that challenge you know if this drive continues and ends in a major then you say well it was a great challenge because it took Winnipeg deep in their own end out of second and long gave them a first down and then they got their offense rolling again so big Stanley Bryant needing a little assistant a little assistance on the uh, on the O line there very slow to get up this O line has been intact I mean, there's two areas in the field that really need to play together one is the O line and the other is the defensive secondary those guys have to be on the same page covering the entire 65 yard wide field and the O line boy if they if they're not working together a little gap cause your quarterback to get hit real quick. Liam Dobson into the game third overall pick in 2021 20, 24 years old will step in there for now. Kolaris with more heat up the middle gets it away again and is that held on to yes Rasheed Bailey is third catch of the ball game. You know, these have been contested catches early in this game. The Riders are in pretty good position defensively, but Zach Kolaros has such great confidence in his receiving core. He believes that he'll put the ball where his receiver has a chance, and it's hard for the defensive back to get there. We've seen it on a couple of outs. There's another one on a dig, low and away, so that Rasheed Bailey could get there, and Milligan had to fight through him to get try and get his hand on it. Bailey already has 39 yards in this game. His season high is 58. Now they'll get it into the hands of Dembski, the playmaker trying to push ahead. And he is taken down by Dolkey at the end of that play. 
Such a smooth handoff. This is, you know, when you talk about smooth execution offensively, this is a great example of it. There's just no hesitation on this fly sweep to Nick Dembski. He takes the ball in stride. Watch. Snap, handoff, and around the edge they go all together with lead blockers. I mean, good gain on first down. Buck Pierce has got that offense rolling and great execution there on that fly sweep. Well, it's second and four, and he's brought Prukop into the game here. So not a second and short situation. We've seen Prukop throw one already today that was incomplete. This time, he's going to keep it. He's got some room right out the middle, makes a move down inside the 25. And a great call from Buck Pierce as Prukop picks up a huge chunk, 17 yards for the quarterback. This, this is what Brady Oliveira's last six games have brought. He brought. It brings attention. And watch how the defense reacts to number 20 as he's going to his right. And then Prukop just pulls it. See all the all the flow of the defense going after Brady Oliveira. And Pru, Prukop pulls it out of there and takes it right up the middle. 11th play of this drive. It was Miles Brown who had the first crack at him. And couldn't track him down. Kolaris with four options over to his left. Throws to the right side of the field. He's got Brady Oliveira who turns around, runs into Sankey, and they'll go down together just shy of that first down marker. Knew he had a man situation because he had his tailback out there. And if your tailback is out there and he's playing against a corner, we can't even see Sankey in the picture yet, but if he's playing against the corner, then Zach Kolaris knows he's got zone. He's playing against Sankey, the middle linebacker out there, while well, he knows he's got a man situation, and Sankey gave Brady Oliveira lots of room. Prukop, and we've seen a lot of them here in the first quarter. Now the 12th play of the drive. Pushes ahead, flags on the play as he takes it down inside the 10-yard line. Boy, this, this quarter has been owned by the Bombers offensively. Two long drives now. Offside. Saskatchewan number six. A five-yard penalty will result in a first down. And Cody Fajardo hasn't even attempted a pass yet in this yeah. football game. A couple of runs on a two and out. And outside of that, it's been all Winnipeg Blue Bombers. That Riders fan still having a good time. <laughs> it's early, right? He's giving the thumbs down to these two drives. Bombers knocking on the door again. First and goal from the Riders six. Polaris out to Dembski. Dembski trying to power his way through, but he's held on to by Milligan and taken down just inside the five-yard line. Yeah, had a couple blockers out front of him. Jeff, Br Jeff Gray was one of them. And Dembski many, many times has scored on that play. That's a good tackle by, by Roland Milligan. Blue Bombers controlling the ball for the majority of the first quarter. They lead by six, and they are on the verge of adding to that at the Banjo Bowl on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Winnipeg. Welcome back to IG Field in Winnipeg, where the numbers kind of <laughs> tell the story. Look at the time of wow. possession and offensive plays in that first quarter. Yeah, lots of numbers on the right column. Not very many numbers, including two zeros off the top on the left column. That was all bombers, two long drives. And, you know, when they say that football comes down to five or six plays, you don't know when the five or six are going to happen. I would suggest this is one of them on second and goal inside the five-yard line because... The, uh, the riders really have to try and hold the bombers right now to a field goal attempt. It's bangeable. I'm so excited to be <laughs> here. It's it's been a great start to this game for the bombers at least. The riders, though, like Glenn said, get a stop here and get that ball back and give Cody Fajardo, that man right there, a chance to throw a pass in this game. Something he did not do in the Third. opening quarter. Two plays. That's it. Prukop into the game. Does have a passing touchdown this season. This time he's going to take it right up the middle and he's in. Touchdown Winnipeg. Dakota Prukop, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Bombers in full control early.
do that swing screen to Nick Dembski, and then this time Nick Dembski is the decoy. The decoy on the fly sweep. Prukop right through the middle, and you start to feel that IG field here is really tilted in the Bombers' favor right now. Well, Latarski is down on the field. Prukop and members of the staff taking a look at him as he holds his. They're going to help him up right away. And he will be helped off the field. Boy, Prukop just sold out to get there, didn't he? He just. <laughs> He felt like there was going to be someone filling that hole he was trying to get through. It was the A gap between the center and guard. And he knew Larry Dean was going to be close. Just hit it. Well, he missed part of the season earlier in the year. And since he has come back, he's really added another element to an already effective Bombers offense. Legio out there for one more. This time he's good on it. And the Bombers now with a 13-0 lead. I'm just wondering why Larry Dean was playing with so much depth. But here comes Devsky on the fake. And then Prukop's going to go right through the middle. And, and why Larry Dean is playing that deep, I'm not sure. Because he's got to step up and fill that hole on Prukop. See how the influence again from Dembski on that fly sweep fake. That pulled him over just a few steps. But... Larry Dean can't get there. Shifted him over, and that was more than enough to finish off a 14-play, 97-yard, eight-minute drive for Winnipeg. Well, we're going to second quarter, and this is the third. Will be the third, provided there's no fumble here. Offensive play for the Riders. What do you do in that situation if you're the Riders? <laughs> you haven't really touched the ball offensively so far. Yeah, I think you just... One way you can adjust there is to basically all out fill the gaps and blitz. It's kind of like a run blitz, so you take all the gaps. What you do there, though, is you leave your DBs in one-on-one -on -one coverage on the four-yard line. So you're, you're picking your poison when you're playing against a team that's executing as well as the Bombers right now on offense. This kick to Mario Alford just inside the 10. Near side leg on the play as he puts together a pretty good return outside the 40 but there's a flag back inside the 25 that is likely going to back this up for Saskatchewan yeah, I was about to say that that's that's one way to grab a little momentum back is to get a big return from Mario Alford Craig Dickinson could have used that but you're right I think this one's coming during back. the return holding during the return, holding Saskatchewan number 32, 10 yard penalty from the 21 yard line and a first down. Let's go to Mike O'Shea on the atmosphere at the Banjo Bowl here in Winnipeg. It's a fantastic venue full of passionate people. And I think it's, I mean, it's not a secret to the viewing audience, you know, to the television audience. Um, but it should be on the list of things to do if you're a CFL fan is, is come here for a, for a banjo bowl and, and get in the stadium. It's, it's pretty cool. I think pretty cool is a nice way to describe it. Well, it's, it's very cool and it's outstanding atmosphere both weekends. That's a big run for Frankie Hicks and try and just get them out of the shadow of their own goalposts and also just get a little momentum offensively, get something rolling. Looks like Hickson's trying to take it on his own shoulders, but the crowd's going to turn it up a notch in the volume right now on first down for Cody Pajardo. Hickson had 85 yards last week, a flag as they turn around and hand it off to him again. He just lowers his shoulders and wants to push it ahead. He had 85 yards and they kind of went away from him in the second half on Monday. And he had a big 127 yard game earlier with Jamal Morrow out so certainly somebody that you can rely upon no question and uh, and you know to over 200 Legal yards procedure Saskatchewan no end that penalty is the crime second down over 200 yards in the last two games penalty has been an issue for quite some time and we have the worst team in the league at it and the best team in the league at limiting the penalties been a story all year long for the green and white. 
second and seven for Fajardo. Steps up over the middle. He's got Kyrie Moore. Moore's going to take it all the way out to midfield. And that is the first pass and the first completion of the day for Cody Fajardo. Yeah, when you look at his last two games, over 800 yards of net offense, 825 yards. That's a mix of Frankie Hickson on the run against BC and Winnipeg Labor Day weekend. But I think it's been Cody Fajardo's best two games back to back, and yet he's still just one and one and can't find the answer against the blue and gold. Three receivers. Out to Fajardo's wide side left. He'll turn, fake the handoff. Now he's going to be flushed out of the pocket. The official gets in the way. He's hammered down. And a completion is made by Fajardo up to the Winnipeg 50. Yeah, Jackson, Jackson Jeffcoat decided not to re redirect and, and actually got the official. Now, good news is the official is up and he's fine. He's coming around the edge. Well, that's Jefferson on one side. Here's Jackson on the left side. Now watch this. He's going to just go get out of my way. I'm trying to run down number seven on the roll there. Adam Paradowski. He's okay. That's Bounce good right to see. Back up. <laughs> Not going to stay down for the Vandal Bowl. Come on. Second and six for Pajardo. Quickly, far side. Completion to Moore again. And that is right at the first down marker, which was placed at the Bomber 45. Really nice throw from Fajardo here to just time up this out. Again, you can't defend it. This We've seen it from Zach Kolaris in the first quarter. No way you can get there in time. And a good drive by the Riders here. About a first down away from field goal range. Needed to establish something trailing 13-0 in this one. Fajardo's 3 of 3 for 34 yards. Hostile territory on the road. They'll hand it off to Hickson. Hickson cuts it back. Jeffcoat takes him down heavily after a short pickup on first down. Really good run defense from the front four for the Blue Bombers because they don't get up the field. Watch how they just hold their positions on the D-line. And what it forces is Frankie Hickson to bounce around. Where's my hole? I can't find the hole there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Bounce around. Bounce around. And sooner or later, that second level, the linebacking core, will step up and make the tackle. Oh, oh. Willie Jefferson moving a bit early. It looks like he knows it too. That'll improve Offside. the circumstances. Winnipeg number five, five yard penalty. It remains second down for the Riders. I think some coaches, when they, you know, they hate penalties. Don't get me wrong. But I think Michael O'Shea will look at the odd offside by Willie Jefferson. And so he's so good out of that stance. I'll live with a couple of those every now and then. His first step as good as you'll see on the planet. Second and three now for Fajardo. Picks him there to his left. Fajardo's going to keep it. He's in trouble. Pushing ahead of be Taken down. Gauthier there to wrap him up after he was forced up the field by Jeff Coach. Yeah, this is what you get when you have two real athletic defensive ends and Willie Jefferson and Jeff Coat. Jeff Coat can play hard, contain, harden the edge, and still redirect to cut off Cody Fajardo. So he's going to come down hard here to Hickson and then redirect and cut off one of the good running quarterbacks in the league from getting out and around the edge. Second sack of the season for Gauthier. Third and five, and the Riders' offense remains on the field. Huge play here in the second quarter. Fajardo gets it away. He's got Evans for a first down, and they'll stay on the field. First catch of the game for Shaq Evans. Confident throw and catch in, boy. Yeah, Shaq Evans being back in the lineup. Huge. Again, you, you know, when you come back for your first game, it takes a second. And, and it was actually a real good first game for Shaq Evans last week and then steps up with a nice catch there to keep the drive alive. First and 10. Riders on the Winnipeg 32. Fajardo looks to the left, throws to the left, pass Kyron Moore, who kind of ducks underneath and eventually is taken down by Big Hill. Fourth catch of the game for Moore. Remember, this drive starts out with a big run from Frankie Hickson. Now, I know it's it's more difficult to do that when you're second and medium, second and five or six. I think you're about second and four. It's a long four. 
as Jason Moss has. He is running the ball a lot more over the last three or four games. Well, Ryder fans wanted to see more of it, and they have been. I was going to say, maybe not all the time after Monday's game. But yeah, you're right. Much talked about. Fresh, fresh game no. here for them to work with. They'll give it to Hicks and spins away. Oh, he gets hammered. And a flag on the play. Hickson got absolutely popped at the end of that drive by Dietrich Nichols. This will be coming back on a hold. Holding Saskatchewan number 69, 10-yard penalty. We're going to replay second down. You know, and this is this is on Logan Bandy, and the center is just a little sloppy with his hand placement. It's as simple as that because because when, when Bandy steps to his left to make this block right in front of Cody Fajardo, he, he's a little sloppy with his left hand up in the shoulder pad area, and then he gets caught holding there. Second and 14, Fajardo trying to get away from Jefferson, and he does. Now Fajardo guns it underneath. And it will be complete. He ended up finding Hardy on the play. They will be just shy of a first down. He was scrambling around there, wasn't he? Well, how shy is the question? I want to say it's it's almost three yards shy. And take a look at the pressure. Bring in Brain Delenius for some extra protection help and then release him late, but boy, Jake Jake Hardy could have backed up two more three more steps before contact. Nick Taylor is down on the field. They take a look at him. We'll step away and be back at IG Field. Well, Jake Hardy was w wide open for that second down throw, and I'll show you why. Because Nick Taylor, who went down, as you mentioned, Dustin, is right here at the top of your screen. It's a non-contact injury. He's just coming out of his break, plants his right foot there, and then just goes down on his own. Was helped off the field. Well, See how he is as the game goes on, but they'll bring in Evan Holm to take his spot. Third and two, they stay out there again. Pressure coming, Fajardo gets it away. Back to Hardy for a first down, and the Riders' offense will stay on the field again. It's time they put Hardy in motion. So he, he was in motion to that side of the field, and he ends up there where you see him now on that half field look with a quick out. And now with the secondary making some changes, although they test the side that didn't make the change. 13th play of the drive for Pajardo. Has some time looking for Kyron Moore in the end zone, and there's a flag on the play. Jamal Parker there in coverage. I was wondering if it was going to come. Looked like a little bit of a hold on the way to the end zone. Yeah, it looked like Kyron Moore was a little late getting out of his break, and I was wondering if there may have been Defensive some holding there early. Defense. Winnipeg number 45. The foul the curve, the end goal. The ball will be placed on the one-yard line and a first down. And that hold, it looked like by Parker pulled Kyron Moore into the middle a little bit. So that's why that was called. And then there's contact before the ball arrives as well. A little push in the back. Yeah, I don't think there's any question there. Now Fajardo looks to finish a pretty impressive drive. Pushing ahead, lunges in, and is he there? No. Just shy. A little bit like trying to find a, a green jersey in this sea of blue at IG Field. Watch how this blue wave hits the line here, and you lose number seven somewhere in there. He's going to try it again. Cody Fajardo pushing no. ahead. Stop. Second try. No. no. Riders are saying that he's in, and he is. Touchdown, Riders. Called on the near side of yep. the field. Cody Fajardo finishes it off, and a response from the visitors. 
had to have it, but it looked like initially there was no shot. I mean, Cody Fajardo right here is stopped well short, a whole yard short, but the second ever, keep pushing, keep pushing, and then stretch the ball. The ball has to cross the plane, not the body. Ruling, ruling on the field is a touchdown by Saskatchewan. Adam Big Hill over the middle again. Seventh rushing touchdown of the season for Cody Fajardo, and it will stand, and it finishes off a 15-play, 99-yard, 8-minute and 10-second drive. So the Riders giving the Bombers a little dose of their own medicine here. Well, 7 for 7, Cody Fajardo. Some real confident throws in traffic. Brad Lotheros to make it a six-point game, and that is exactly what he will do. So much-needed response from that man, Cody Fajardo, finally had a chance to have the football, took it down, and punched it into the end zone. Big touchdown drive for Saskatchewan. They needed a bounce back. Started with a 17-yard run from Frankie Hickson to get things going in the shadow of their own goalpost. But some confident throws by Cody. Couple on the run by Fajardo. They get it down inside the red zone. Needed two shots at the one-yard line, but got it in on the second. And the Riders are on the board. 15 plays, 99 yards in eight minutes. 39 of those yards to Kyra and Moore. Four targets, caught all four of them. Twice they stayed on the field facing third and two and more and managed to get it done as well. Now Ford on the far side of the field working on this return, looking for some room and eventually forced out of bounds before he could get to his 30. A look there, Jamarcus Hardrick, 2021 All-Star in this league. We'll have more on him when we return. Welcome back to Winnipeg, everyone. There's Jamarcus Hardrick. He was an All-Star last year, might end up being one this year. For more on him, let's send it down to Sarah Orleski. Well, he's been such a key part of this offensive line, Dustin, when you look at it since arriving here in 2016. Consistency is one of the things that we have often talk about with this offensive line, whether in terms of personnel or just their level of play. And we asked Hardrick about having to face this defensive line for the Riders. We know the talent that they have coming off of the end. He said, with respect to A.C. Leonard, there are certain football players that you try to turn into athletes. There are certain guys you go up with that are athletes you try to turn into football players. When it comes to Leonard, he says he is an athlete through and through. It's his job to make him look like a football player. Can't be an easy guy to attack against, I would think. Well, interesting because A.C. Leonard is a former receiver, and, you know, you get a receiver in space with a big guy like Hardrick, and, yeah, that's where the receiver wins. But he wants to make him a football player, make him be physical, make him stop the run, make him go up and try to hold his ground against a guy in Jamarcus Hardrick that weighs 320 pounds. And by the way, talked at length <laughs> about his favorite dinner. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a steak guy. Here's Kolaris looking for Dembski just like last week. And this time Moncrief gets there, but there's multiple flags. He arrived early as it falls incomplete. Yeah, it was just a timing issue, and there's that matchup. We've seen Derek Moncrief. Defensive pass interference, Saskatchewan number 42. Point of the infraction, automatic first down. He's done a great job against guys like Brian Burnham and, and Nick Dembski at times, but Dembski had a touchdown on him last week, and that was just early contact, didn't look back to the ball, no question on the interference here, and it'll be a point of foul penalty. Well, that's a huge bump up the field. Kolaris gets this one away just in time, but it falls incomplete. He was looking for Dalton Schoen, and Schoen couldn't haul it in. So it was you, Sarah, and our producer, John Hines, on the phone with the with Hardrick, and we were doing our Zoom calls, and I think it's the first time ever with our Zooms with players or coaches where after his discussion on stakes, we all went and changed our dinner plans yeah. that night because <laughs> I know I went and got myself a nice, good big stick to barbecue too he's you know they these guys the winnipeg blue bombers talk about all the time they spend off the field together one of and the reasons they're winning team yeah a lot of the results right here on the field oh, and a nasty ball on but he's able to hang on 
as he was hammered down along the sidelines by Nick Marshall. Big hit. Top rookie hanging on. Boy, that was a good hit. Clean from Nick Marshall. Good timing on the shot. He's looking for interception number four. Must drive him crazy that Derek Moncrief, technically a linebacker, has more interceptions than him. Moncrief has four. <laughs> You're right. It probably does. Brukop back in the game third and mere inches. Flags here anyway as he pushes ahead. But I saw a tweet from Zach Kolaros this week as well when he was asked about the, the Defensive bombers. Defensive offside, Saskatchewan. Five-yard penalty will result in a first down. Asked about the Bombers' record and, you know, their 11 wins in 12 starts. And, and he said, you know, we spend a lot of time together. We, we love each other in that room. We respect each other. And that's why we, we play for each other. And, you know, whenever we Zoom with the Winnipeg Blue Bomber players, it seems like that is a theme which every single guy, including Jamarcus Hardrick, who says they spend, that old line spends tons of time off the field together. Just back to Hardrick, he tells he used to have his steak well done <laughs> until he got it right once he moved up here to Canada. Now they find Genski at the five to the end zone, and he's in! Touchdown Bombers again! Genski takes it home, his second of the game, and he is blown in the Banjo Bowl. Third in the last game and a half for number 10 against this Ryder team, his former team. But Dembski says he loves making people miss. Whether he gets it running the football, catching it, doesn't matter to him. Loves to make guys miss in the open field. Doesn't get enough credit for his top end speed, but some shaking and bacon there. The Bombers simply will not be stopped in this first half. A six play, 82 yard drive now finished off by the leg of Mark Leggio and Winnipeg goes back on top by 13. Dick Dembski now six touchdowns on the season. Three of them as Glenn said in the last game and a half as he got that ball turned and took it all the way home. <laughs> the Much to the delight of the big man going for a roll at the Banjo Bowl. Gotta love it. Medium rare. He said, I'm medium rare now. Now he is, yeah. <laughs> Twice baked potato guy as well, he yeah, told us. Yeah. Dembski, last year in this game, didn't have that touchdown, but went off for one of the best games of his career. And now he's found the end zone twice. And your Saskatchewan, you go out, you put together an eight-minute drive of yourself, you get in the game, you're only down six, and then the Bombers just hammering back at you. Still time, though, 3.06 here. Lots of time for Cody Fajardo to put together another response. Lots of time to do it before the half. Bombers have had three possessions, three touchdowns. Riders have only had two possessions, a two and out, and a touchdown drive themselves. Leggio boots it away for the 13-point lead. Mario Alford watches it bounce at the 18. Now he's going to slide under it, brings it up the near side of the field, tries to cut it back, looking for some room, but he is wrapped up and taken down by who else? Mike Miller there to make sure he wasn't going to do any damage. Mike Miller was three special teams catches behind the BC Lions. Kevin Francis for first, so Miller trying to catch him and get back on top. Usually is by the end of the season. Back up on top of the team lead in that category as well. A few other guys in the mix. Double-digit special teams tackles already this season. One more play before the warning. Fajardo seven for seven, 65 yards. He's going to keep it himself. He takes off right up the middle with a slide. Big Hill came over right at the end of it. Fajardo was looking for a flag, but it doesn't look like there will be one as we hit the three-minute warning of the Banjo Bowl at IG Field. What a beautiful day in Winnipeg. And it's the Bombers on top, 20-7 to against their arch rivals. I'd love to tell you what we're going to talk about at half, but right now it is time for a performance from Milt Stiegel, the banjo-playing beagle. Milt. 
And a nice carry from Hickson, and that'll be enough for a first down. Five yards on the play to Hickson. Yeah, plenty of time to, to run the offense for Saskatchewan. Just keep Hickson involved. I know Jason Moss is trying to mix it up. He's hasn't really taken a shot down the field just yet. First and 10 on the rider, 39. Three flags. At the same time, and it looked like illegal, illegal Josiah St. John. Saskatchewan number 59, five-yard penalty, still first down. Chalk one up for the crowd here at the Banjo Bowl at IG Field and making it tough. But when you came into this game here this evening, the penalty differences was just unbelievable. About half which is just crazy. Such an advantage for the Bombers when they stay disciplined. Now Fajardo dumps it off to Hickson. Jeffco coming over and gets enough of him to knock him down. After a very short pickup, that'll bring up second and long. Yeah, I didn't get the number on who stepped up and played contain there because contain was the key because if Hickson gets outside on this run, he's got a chance to make a big, big play out of it. I believe it was Shane Gauthier who got him turned inside to Jeffco. Kept him from getting outside. There was a lot of room out there at the top of your screen. Second and 14 now for Cody Fajardo. He's eight of eight so far in this ball game. Three men pressure. Fajardo far side has a completion to Moore. Had to go up and get it. Tried to turn and push ahead. And a flag at the end of the play for a late hit it looks like. And that's huge because that would keep this offense on the field. Yeah, late, either late hit or possibly a face mask. Looked like his helmet got ripped off over there. Let's take a look right at the sideline. He's short foul. of the first down. Necessary roughness. Winnipeg number one. 15-yard penalty enforced from the end of the play. And a first down. Yeah, Diedrich Nichols pulled his helmet right off him. That's Can't, can't argue that one, yeah, right? The evidence be, is pretty clear. That's definitely going to be unnecessary roughness here. You take another look. And there's the face mask right there, no question. Officials have been on this first half. 26 yards after the penalty. And all of a sudden, the visitor is in business here with just over two minutes to work. Fajardo, near side, has a completion. That's to Emelis. And he is wrapped up immediately by home, but Cody Fajardo is now 10 for 10 in the opening half. Keep in mind that Keon Schaefer Baker not in the lineup in this first half in the starting lineup, not out there offensively. He's dressed, but one of the guys that was hit with the illness. So Emelis gets a chance here, makes that catch. And it's the second game for Braden Lenius, who we haven't talked about just yet. One throw already to Shaq Evans, I remember over the middle. Couple of catches last week for Lanius and his return to the lineup. They'll give it to Hickson. Hickson wrapped up neatly and stopped short of the first down. Casey Sales got an arm on him and made sure he couldn't get where he needed to go. Yeah, Casey Sales and Jake Thomas were the other guys. <laughs> yeah, when, you're, when you're talking about the Bomber D-line, very valuable, great teammates. Guys that the team absolutely love the way they play in the middle. But when you got Jefferson and Jeffcoat on either on the bookends, that's where the press goes in the post-game interviews. Third and one for Fajardo. He's going to roll out to his right. Is he going to throw it? He's in trouble. Has to throw it. And it's incomplete. Jamal Parker in coverage. Bats it away. They just needed a yard. And Fajardo went for more. Yeah, I think the play was designed to actually run it. So this is, you can't really compare this with the end of the Labor Day game. It looked like he was trying to get Fajardo around the edge to get there and run it, but he was run, cut off. Cut off by Nick Hallett, the safety. Couldn't throw it any better, and it looked like it was just dropped. First incompletion of the game for Fajardo. And now the Bombers get the ball with a minute 21 left in the quarter and a 13-point lead. 
They'll hand it off. Augustine pushing ahead, but Sankey eliminates that run quickly. Been a good first half for Kyra Moore, and I, he just let that one slip through his hands, but and it does happen. But again, I, I, you know, Jason Moss discussing the run options were cut off, and there were two run options options between the tackle to the back. Then there was the fake when Cody pulled it, but he got cut off, couldn't get the edge, so he had to throw it, trying to rally the troops right now. Back to the drawing board for Fajardo. Second and seven for Winnipeg. Minute left to go in the second quarter. Pressure up the middle. Kolaris out to his left. And now he's going to drop it over the top. He's got a completion to Brandon O'Leary Orange. This is fourth catch of the season. And this is a big one. 23 yards for number 84. Just uh, his great awareness, Kolaris of time and space, and to, to know when he's got the time to do this. He's, he's going to get outside. He knows he's got lots of time, so the little pump fake is just, maybe I freeze a defender, which he did. He pulled one up. On the run again, out to his left, lets it go. He's got a completion for a first down to Rasheed Bailey. And for Bailey, that's his fourth catch team leading fourth catch of the ball game. Yeah, we always talk about how right-handed quarterbacks rolling out to their left can be dangerous for the quarterback. I, I'm not sure there's any better than Zach Kolaris rolling to his left. Great going to the right, too, but you like him on the well, left. Well, yeah, they, the right-handers can all go to the right. Yeah. They, that's that's their comfort zone. But the going to the left is tough because you got to get that front shoulder around. And, oh, by the way, Darnell Sankey's bearing down on you. And the accuracy from number eight through the roof. Bombers looking for more. Kolaris over the middle. Has a completion and a ton of room here for Bailey. Takes it down inside the 10. Looking for the corner. Running toward the end zone. And he stopped just short. No! They're going to say touchdown! What an effort! After a discussion, they rule it a touchdown for Rasheed Bailey. And the Bombers blow this thing wide open late. Four-man pressure. Slam route. No linebacker in the middle. They were in coverage. Now let's see. Does he cross the plane or touch the cone? Foot in bounds. Oh, it looked Whoa. like he was just shy. I every, thought he was just short originally. Every touchdown or attempted touchdown is reviewed automatically. Oh, oh. maybe he did touch the pylon. You see that cone move? Foot's in bounds. I checked that. He must have got it. A little bit of a wobble on it right there. That's full-blown Superman effort from Rasheed Bailey for 34 yards. Fourth touchdown of the season for 88. Touch the cone, you're in. Looked like he touched the cone. Legio to make it a 20-point ball game, and he knocks it through. Or pylon, I should say. But it doesn't matter. Bailey got there in dramatic fashion. Best game of the season. Is it a bird? For Rasheed Bailey. Is it a plane? No. It's Super Bailey. Oh! oh. Whoa, what a play. What a play. With the Superman stance, too, by the way, at the end. How about that? Just a phenomenal effort from Rashid Bailey. His best game so far this season, he went for 58 hey, Mama, yards. I Mama, I love you. Hey, God is real, man. He doesn't even know what else to say. And he, and he loves up. his mom, yeah. so. <laughs> That's great. That's great. The party is on here in Winnipeg. Huge third down. Riders could have tried well, to just punch it ahead and pick up the yard. They got Fajardo to the outside, and what was it 51 seconds later, they punch it in. When you play against the Bombers, if you make a mistake, they will make you pay for it. That, that has happened all season long. Doesn't matter the opponent. One little drop by Kyron Moore turns into seven the other way. Right here's Hickson. 
trying to push ahead. He stops just inside the 40. Lots to discuss for the panel coming up at halftime. How about this? The Bombers drive so far. 10 yards or 10 plays, 73 yards touchdown. 14 plays, 97 yards touchdown. Six plays, 82 yards touchdown. Four plays, 76 yards and a touchdown. And this is a, a top-ranked defense that Craig Dickinson has on his side. I mean, a real good secondary. They had the one change due to the illness with Jeremy Clark out, but they have Pete Robertson who's been quiet. AC Leonard too. Cody Fajardo is 10 of 11, but he's down 20. Now he's on the run, and he's got some room to go. He'll slide out around the 45 with 17 seconds on the clock. Six-yard pickup for Fajardo. Sometimes when you're when you're playing against the Bombers too, and you know I I don't want to get in the mind of coaches too much, but a, a head coach may be thinking, you know, we have to do something extraordinary to beat them rather than just make sort of sound decisions kick the field goal when you can take the field goal and the points they think they have to do something special to beat this team the pressure coming Fajardo near side finds Emelis Emelis cuts it back up looking for some space gets it to midfield and eventually will be taken down just on the Bombers side of the 55 I tell you what it's, it's kind of like the end of, of last game at Labor Day when Many thought they should have run. I'll be in that line myself, but through an interception, seal it. Seven seconds, Fajardo quickly. And there's still time on the clock as he gets it to Lenius for the first time today. Well, take a long shot. Why not? They're going to trot Lothar out here. Now, the, the downside is Janarian Grant, number 80. Ooh. Now, your, your long field goal team is, is different than your short field goal team. Their, your long field goal team has a couple more linebackers and guys that can get down there and make a tackle in case it's missed. 53 yards for Brett Lothar. Hoping to find a glimmer of hope for the Riders here at the end of the first half. That kick is up and it is good as he tucks it through and the riders will tack on three more at the end of the first half but they are in a hole winnipeg in full control of the banjo bowl up 27 to 10. let's send it to kate and the panel for hot time and that panel the conclusion of our triple header comes up next with the Stampeder taking on the Elks. You can see that 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. But for now, let's get you back to IG Field as the Palmers are having a special presentation for Sarah Orleski's last day. Please put your hands together as we thank longtime TSN reporter and Winnipegger Sarah Orleski for setting the bar as one of the most professional, well-respected, and talented reporters the club and the CFL has been lucky to work with over the course of her career. We now welcome Wade Miller, president and CEO of the Winnipeg Football Club, for a special presentation. Well, Sarah, on behalf of uh, CFL fans and especially your hometown fans, we thank you for all the years that you've covered the CFL, the Blue Bombers, and we have a helmet for you. And now you can now be a fan of your hometown team. So we've got a jersey for you as well. And uh, I get to turn the tables on you. What are you gonna miss about the CFL and being here at IG Field? Uh, well, I wasn't expecting to have to I, I know, that's what it is. Um, honestly, so the CFL has been a part, obviously, of my job for the last 14 and a half years at TSN, but it is the players, it is the coaches, and it is the fans across the league that I will miss the most. You all have been so wonderful to me, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Thank you. 
you very much, Sarah. We appreciate it. Wow. All right, Sarah, we'll miss you. Oh, you're making us tear up in here. Yeah, Dick, you think I can get her weighing machine? A uh, uh, humble, <laughs> humble rock star, isn't she? Yes, she is. Yes, wow. she is. She, we are going to miss her. Fantastic day. Great tribute to her home from her hometown. Second half action coming up here in Winnipeg. But before that, we send it down to Sarah Orleski for her final sideline interview with us. She's got Kyron Moore. Well, you guys didn't have the ball necessarily a ton in that first half from the offensive side, but when you did, you were able to be productive. What does it say about this group, particularly when we know what everyone's dealing with? Uh, just that we, we we love each other. You know, we play together, and, and once we stay together, uh, the sky the limit for us. For you, what's the key in this second half for you guys to be able to come back in this one? Uh, just uh, put together uh, a game on all three phases, you know, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, once we all come together and start clicking, then I feel like the game going to start turning around. We know that the bug's been hitting this group. How have you been feeling? I, I've been feeling good. Okay. I've been feeling good. <laughs> Thanks for the time. No, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. He played well in the first half as well. Five catches, 50 yards for Kyron Moore. More on Sarah's final game as we work our way through the second half of this broadcast. Dembski with a couple of touchdowns. He had himself a game as well. Are you ready for the second half, Glenn? I'm ready. Let's right, let's, let's kick this second half off. And interesting, isn't it, that every single player just mentions congratulations to Sarah. And thanks, Sarah, for her great work with the CFL over the years. The league loves her, no doubt about it. Here's Mary Alford. This could change things. Mary Alford to midfield, down to the 15, and the race is on. He's going to take it to the 30, the 15, and he's all the way gone. What a start for the Riders. No flags on the field, and Mary takes it all the way that's how quickly you grab momentum in Canadian football and he takes off he's got another speed that he displays at the top of this run around the edge through the hole and now watch out running the angles now Legio is probably not going to catch him but I'm talking about the rest of that cover team, no shot, couldn't make up ground. He's got another speed, and that's grabbing momentum out of the second halftime break. Alford now with his third return. He's got a missed field goal return, two kick returns, and the extra point after a 92-yard return for Mario Alford. And just like that, are you, the are, Riders are back in business. Let me ask you, are, are you ready for the second half to kick off? <laughs> I guess we are, as well, Mary Alford would not be stopped. You know what, I was I was warming up into the second half when Mary Alford said, here, I'm going to bring a little sense of urgency to your call upstairs, and let's do this out of the gate. Great pickup by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to get... Such a talented returner in Mario Alfred just outruns angles. You know, it's at times you don't even have to block the guy in front of you. He's he's gonna make a miss and go, and it's a great way to start the second half for the team that was behind. They needed something to go their way, and they got it early, courtesy special teams. Third return touchdown of the year for Mario Alford. And now Janarian Grant with a chance to respond, and he's certainly capable of it as well. Bomber's return game missed him over the last couple of outings. Bedvik set to kick it away. Now the Riders just down 10. Grant will slide under this at the 12. Grant looking to the far side of the field, cuts it back up the middle, and that is where they will wrap him up, Lacombo with the tackle and Winnipeg 27 points in the first half excellent excellent first half for Zach Kolaris unbelievable really 14 of 15 for 187 three touchdown passes he's done it on the run like he's done it all year he can do it from the pocket thrown across his body to Dembski on the first touchdown another one to Dembski over the middle he did a little heavy lifting of his own Great first half for number eight. 
And they're going to start this half by getting it into the hands of Dembski, who goes up and over Dean and eventually taken down. Just one incompletion for Zach Kolaris in the first half. The four possessions they had all ended in majors. And he has been dominant. The Riders have won just one of the last six Banjo Bowls. And it was when Kolaris was their quarterback. Now Dembski to the table at the end of that play. It looked like a little bit of an awkward finish to that last play. Janarian Grant has come out for him. He's right up at the top of your screen. Second and six. Polaris looking down the field. He's got another completion. This one to Schoen. And Winnipeg looks to strike back immediately. A 28-yarder to the first-year bomber. Well, I think, first of all, Zach Kolaros loved the matchup he was going to get. Schoen's going to come here and then run the corner. You'll see it to the left of your screen, and he's going to see the matchup with, with Larry Dean. Now, now, Larry Dean's pretty good athletic cover guy, but he got that him in the deep half and a corner route in front of him. I think Zach Kolaros loves the matchup, put it right out to where only Schoen could block out Larry Dean from getting around and knocking that down. Second catch of the game for Schoen. Now they'll hand it off to Oliveira. And he is wrapped up and taken down by A.C. Leonard. Shown each of his last three games has finished with just two catches. We'll see how much more he has in him today. Looking for his 10th touchdown on the season for Dalton Schoen. If he can get one more here this evening. And a rookie in the league, seventh overall in CFL receiving. Pretty good. Brady, very good. <laughs> Brady Oliveira stands in there to the right of his quarterback. Second and six. Kolaris in a little bit of trouble. On the run, out to his right, pointing down the field. Gets it away, and it will fall incomplete. A.C. Leonard went down on Kolaris at the end of the play, but that'll bring up a third down for Winnipeg. You remember when Jim Marcus Hardrick and Sarah, where they were talking in the first half about making A.C. Leonard be a football player and taking away that athleticism. Well, this play, he gets to be an athlete again, redirect and run down Kolaris, make it tough to make that throw. Saw the former receiver quickness in A.C. Leonard there. Legio had that huge game winner last week, missed an extra point early in this one. And now he's got a 45-yard field goal attempt just inside the left hash. And that kick is up, and it has more than enough right down the middle. And that pushes Winnipeg up to 30 points at home against the Riders. Well, a little trip down memory lane back to Shaftesbury High School for Sarah Orleski, the class of 98, inducted into the school hall in 2007. Let's send it down to her on our sidelines. Well, Dustin, what's great to know is that I haven't aged a bit from that picture, huh? I don't think you did. No, huh? no, not at all. Right? Not yeah. at all. No, still look the same age. I, it was truly, I just want to thank everybody. I mean, it was truly overwhelming to be able to see what happened um, at the sideline. And the, you know, the acknowledgement that I've had over the last couple of weeks from teams has just been so greatly appreciated from the fans and then from the Bombers here today. And, of course, it's been such a pleasure working with you two. Uh, it's been the best. This is it's been a real labor of love for me. Ah, oh, thanks, Sarah. We'll have a little bit more on Sarah as we work her way through the final half that she'll be with us. Pajardo hands it off to Hickson. He's trying to pop it to the outside, and he does. Frankie Hickson, he's going to take it midfield, hit down at the 50, but another big carry. This one is longest of the game. It goes for 20 yards for Frankie Hickson. Little, little Mario Alford acceleration to get the edge here from Frankie Hickson. That's just first, second gear, that outside, nice bounce, jump cut almost to get outside of Willie Jefferson, which is hard to do. Moves that ball up to the Winnipeg 50. Fajardo out to his right on the run, near side completion to Hardy, who's had an opportunity here with Schaefer Baker out, and that's his third catch of the ball game. You know, humility is, I've always said humility is a strength, and Sarah showed great humility again at halftime when 
Wade was presenting the jerseys. We've seen it across the country. The players all mentioning Sarah and 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 again humble in that interview when when she said she loved the response. It was a standing ovation. The sold out crowd here at IG Field on their feet at halftime for Sarah. Very cool. She was probably testing us there to let us know Wolitarski and Nick Taylor won't be back. Okay. She informed me of that earlier, and that's on her phone grinding away, right? So, yes, she did send that along. So, for everybody who's just joining us, injured in the first half, both Nick Taylor and Drew Wolitarski will not return to this ballgame. All right, so here we are again, third and short. We saw what happened in the, late in the second quarter. They tried to get Fajardo out with a couple of different run options. You just push it ahead this time? Well, the entire Ryder Nation right now is saying either give it to 20 or push ahead. Do not throw it. And Once they will down. push ahead. Fajardo with a lunge. All he needed was the 40. And it sure looked like he had it. Well, the fans didn't see it at the end of last game. There were, you know, there was a chance to go ahead by a point late in that game on the Labor Day weekend. And around the 30-yard line, they decided to throw the football. If you take a look back Sunday, there was under two minutes here in the game, and it was intercepted by Hallett after the tip from Hickson. So all the talk all week in Saskatchewan run the ball in certain situations like that, and that's what they're doing. They're going to pitch it out to Hickson again, and he's got some room. Tracked down from behind after an excellent move. And eventually it's Big Hill who finishes him off, but Hickson is running downhill on the Bombers. I mean, you know, we all we all like what we've seen from Jamal Morrow, who's the starting tailback in Saskatchewan, over 500 yards, still their leader. But, man, this guy is dynamic. Watch this move. Out on the outside, he's got one-on-one -on -one with Hallett now. Is it a cutback? And, yeah, whew, it is. Now they get it out to Lenius, and he's wrapped up. Tackle for a loss. Excellent coverage there by Donald Rutledge. That's one thing about the Bombers, though. Yeah, it doesn't matter if there's a couple big plays that happen against them or if they make a mistake, which is rare, but it happens. They, they think about the next play immediately. Their, their shift to the next play and getting Saskatchewan into second and long. Trying to limit this drive to a field goal attempt. Riders came into this game dead last in the league in second down conversions. 40%. They need a big one here. Second and 11. Fajardo looks to his left. Pressure coming. He's going to take off up the middle. Cody Fajardo's got some room. He's going to take it down inside the 15. And he's hammered at the end of the play. And there's a flag on it. As Cody Fajardo makes a lot of something out of nothing. Well, the last three games, he's he's back to the Cody Fajardo that we're used to. And, and the Cody, Cody Fajardo we're used to runs the football. He loves to run the football. They'll call design runs for him. He did it in college at Nevada. He This is what yep. he loves to do, especially in key situations. Now, the hook slide was yep, declared. And hey, Hallett Jekyll. comes over. Unnecessary. Very close what? on the timing there, but enough to call it unnecessary roughness and it may be the dipping of the shoulder that was After the review by the command center there is no infraction yeah. uh, on the they're play. picking it up the timing was good by Hallett that's what I mentioned that the the timing was so close there the quarterback has got to declare that he's gonna hook slide feet first early enough so that any defender has a chance to pull off the hit <laughs> The fans reacted immediately, but the command center doesn't hear the fans. They're back in Toronto. I would think that one earlier when Big Hill hit him would have been more of a case for a flag than that one that we just saw, right? So they picked it up. First down anyway. And Cody Fajardo's got the ball in the Winnipeg 14. Working against a hostile crowd here at IG Field. Fajardo, a hold on the play, throws it towards the end zone, and it'll be hauled in by Garrett Moore. And he lunges in but this appears to be coming back, and it will. Yeah, the guy that got held is the guy Holding that made the tackle. Saskatchewan number 64, 10 yard penalty, still first down. And the guy that was celebrating right there, Ricky Walk Walker, who was 
in the rotation on the D line. He's going one on one on Evan Johnson now. Keep in mind, and I'm not giving him an alibi here or an excuse, but they have been pretty ill coming into this game, that O line, and it may be catching up to him because Evan Johnson just trying to hang on. He's got his left arm around the neck of Walker. And that flag came out immediately. Walker ends up making the tackle on Fajardo. He's going to take the touchdown off the board. First to 20 on the Winnipeg 24. Three options to the right for Fajardo. Looks to the left on the run. Look out, he's taken down. Jeff Cook was there waiting, and he finishes him off. Quarterbacks love that blind turn at times because they, they'll get a defender to bite inside and lose containment. Not this time and not for Jackson Jeffcoat. He's going to stay and execute his assignment and stay on the upfield shoulder. So when Cody Fajardo tries the blind turn, he runs right into the arms of 94. Sets him up in a second and forever situation. They need 33 yards. In field goal range, at least right now, Fajardo quickly finds Shaq Evans. Evans is going to turn it up, takes it down, and will secure that ball just outside the 25. And they will put Brett Lothar to work once again. Yeah, much, a much more friendly attempt for Brett Lothar, and I think that was the goal here. And now you can see that, you know, back-to-back -back loss of yards, one for penalty, one for the sack, get a manageable, friendly field goal attempt here for Lothar. Fajardo still just has one incompletion so far today, and it was on that third down when he rolled out. He's 15 of 16 for 124 yards. Lothar knocks it up and through to make it a 10-point ball game in the Banjo Bowl. Don't go anywhere. We got a good one on our hands at IG Field. Nanaimo, BC, you've just won groceries for a year thanks to Save on Foods' million dollar touchdown to win. Congratulations, Jared. If there's another kickoff return for a touchdown in today's game, you could also win a million bucks. Ooh, that sounds nice, <laughs> doesn't it? I think Jason's watching till the end of the game. No, uh, no pressure, Mario Alford and Janarian Grant, but you can make somebody a million. Here's Dembski back in the game after being tended to on the sideline a little bit earlier on. And boy, Dembski's been rolling as of late. Yeah, he's he is going after his, right his former Look team, isn't he? That was early in the first quarter. He had another one in this game. And then if you go back to Labor Day Sunday, nice touchdown over the top in that matchup with Derek Moncrief and again Moncrief has played really well covering some very good receivers in the league Emsky got him on Sunday it wasn't Moncrief in those touchdowns here tonight second and three little flip and some room to work along the near sideline as they get it into the hands of Greg McRae How's this for an 11 quarter stretch? 17 catches, 240 yards, four touchdowns and six touchdowns yeah, in his gets, last six games. Just gets crazy. I mean, 17 of 20. Well, what happened on those four? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Step up, Nick. <laughs> you know, they're missing Greg Ellingson, but they have everybody else who continually steps up. Rasheed Bailey is having an excellent game. Now they go back to Dembski again, and he'll be wrapped up just shy of a first down, his fifth catch of the ball game, and this looks like Prukop territory for the Bombers. Yeah, good point on, on, Nick, on uh, Rash Rasheed Bailey because... You know, a guy that had that great athletic move to score at the end of the first half. And, for, and I, I loved his interview with Sarah, of course, to congratulate her and thank her for all her work in the CFL, unsolicited. And that's what every player and coach ha has been doing throughout the league. But Bailey talking about working behind the scenes. Prukop very easily picks up the first down there. You know, and, and sometimes when you're when you're on a star-studded 11 win team coming in, you, you know, there are some players that are working their butt off at practice all week. And, and you know, you're just not talking about them as much because there's Nick Dembski's and 
Dalton Jones having big seasons, but and Greg Ellingson, as you mentioned. But there's where it pays off, and all that work pays off right there with a real athletic touchdown. Yeah, and he's not putting up gaudy numbers this year, but he's second on the team in targets. Like, they are looking to him on a regular basis for some short yardage stuff, but it's really quick for him today. Now they're going to toss it to Densky again. And rinse and repeat here for the Bombers, as that'll be close to a first down, and Prukop waits to get the call to come in and push ahead one more time. Yeah, you know, uh, it's almost to a point with the way that Kolaris is executing this, this offense right now, that Jason Shivers is going to have to try and just get a little more aggressive, just load the line of scrimmage, send tons of blitz, put his guys in the back end on one-on-one -on -one and see if Buck Pierce's receiving core can win their one-on-one -on -one battles. I mean, just to play four-man pressure with your backers dropping just isn't working. Second and three, Oliveira ahead, up towards the 30, more than enough. And the Bombers remain on the field. But just six down. Just his his demeanor, his his calm, cool, no matter what happens, demeanor when he steps back. Zach, I'm talking about Kalara steps back from the huddle, takes a breath, is not really even looking at the defense yet. Then he looks at his play package. Then he steps back up. Now he's getting the call in his ear from Buck Pierce. He's just like a machine right now. Three receivers out to his right. They'll move Bailey in underneath. They'll give it to Brady Oliveira, and he pushes it down. What a pickup here by Oliveira, who's got those legs churning here in the second half. See, he's got A.C. Leonard frozen now. Because of the way Kolaris has been able to throw on the run, A.C. Leonard is so cautious to not let him get outside that he's going to open up an inside run, run lane to Brady Oliveira. He steps up the field, see him stay wide and hesitate out there. He doesn't want number eight to get outside and around him like he's done a couple times in the first half. And he opens up a run lane for 20. Bombers have not had to punt yet in this ball game. Five possessions, four touchdowns, and a field goal. And they're within striking distance once again. Second and three. They'll give it to Oliveira. He's wrapped up, but he probably had enough on forward progress. And that'll be a first down and a flag late after the play here. Hey. You know, when you when you look at the linebacking core for Saskatchewan defensively, I think, you, you you know, you've got a great group back there. I mean, Darnell Sankey, Larry Dean, they're, what, two and three in defensive tackles in the league coming in. You know, they're in the top four for sure. After the play, major foul, unnecessary roughness, Saskatchewan number 45. This is a misconduct penalty. It will be at the distance and a first down. Pete Robertson, the guilty party here. Well, he's, he's, let's take a look. He's, it's at the left of your screen. Part of the tackle and then that punch, punch to the face to smash Oliveira's head to the ground. We will be back to IG Field. Welcome back to Winnipeg, everyone. Let's uh, get a another look at the penalty here against Pete Robertson. Yeah, right? you know it's it's not a lot. I mean, you know, probably see that kind of thing at the end at the bottom of a pile almost every play, except for you know you could think that maybe reputation sort of proceeds. And I don't mean in Robertson's case. I mean in this entire team's case. And it gets the officials a little twitchy. You, when you do that, you put it in their hands. It wasn't much, but it was enough. Called it. Bombers up 10, far side, looking for more to the end zone, and he's in! Touchdown, Brandon O'Leary Orange! His first CFL touchdown comes at a banjo bowl. Hang on to it now, keep the ball. <laughs> Look at Jamarcus Hardrick carrying him off. <laughs> Well, there's some options there. Once once Kolaris got outside, he had lots of options. And O'Leary Orange with his first. That's pretty cool. You don't you, you'll never forget that one. Your first touchdown goes in the trophy case. 
Nine play, 70 yard drive, five minutes, 26 seconds. And he loves his mom too. That's Everybody <laughs> loves their mom. If my mom's watching, I love you too. Here's Legio. Sneaks it in. And the lead is back to 17 for Winnipeg. Zach Kolaris, four touchdown passes today. He's 19 of 21. Well, and using all the targets. I mean, end of first half, it was Rashid Bailey. We've seen Walatarski. Some Dalton Schoen. Winnipeg is on top, despite this excellent effort from Mario Alford. The Riders trail by 17 on the road. Welcome back to Winnipeg, everyone. Sarah Orleski's final day, and much like the Bombers, I guess, today, she had an opportunity to fly high during her career here with TSN. Yeah, a, a competitive edge to our Sarah Orleski, who hit 6.7 Gs because DB, one of our ISO directors, got the 6.6 .6 in one of these flights, and, you know, it's just done so much for the game, and we want to thank Sarah, too. It's been such a pleasure working with you, Sarah, all through the years, and great dedication, and what's What's cool about it is she's been such a consummate pro for so many years, as you know, and earned the respect of every player and coach in this league. And I think right now there are so many young women across the country going, why not me? Yeah, she's one of the best to ever do it. You will never hear anybody across this league say a bad word about Sarah Orleski. It's, she deserves every single piece of recognition that she's gotten that she announced that she was bailing on us and leaving us and breaking our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, absolutely tremendous to work with. Hickson gets popped here as he brings it back outside the 10 as we start the fourth quarter of this ball game where Cody Fajardo has one incompletion and he's trailing 17 on the road. Yeah, I mean, his kryptonite is, is still there. I mean, he's he's playing good football and has played clean football the last couple weeks. I mentioned the over 800 net yards the last two weeks, but one and one in those games when playing great football because it's the Bombers. The Bombers, is his, that's his mountain that he still has not been able to conquer. And as the quarterback of the Riders, that's the one thing you have to do is find a way to beat the Bombers. Down 17 here. Looks towards Evans. That one was almost picked off. Winston Rose was all over that ball. We had a good talk with Winston on the Zooms. Said he loves, he, if, if he had a choice between zone and man coverage, what do you think he said? You know, man? DB. DB. Yeah, he said, exactly, he, said man, of he wants to lock down a man. A good jump on the ball here. That they have DB night once a week. Again, Bomber players talking about how much time they spend together. He had a chance there. They went bowling a couple of weeks ago, which is always a fun time. Fajardo in trouble. Willie's got him, and he takes him down at the one. Willie Jefferson all over Cody Fajardo. Stand up position off the edge, four man pressure, no even show blitz there, inside move. That's just a stunt. When you're not sending more than they can block, it's not a blitz, it's a stunt. And that stunt gets home. Looks like Jamal Campbell. Remember the, the old line hit with that illness, probably taking tons of fluids and maybe a rotation now. It looks like Jamal Campbell's moved in at guard. I think a lot of offensive lines in this league get sick to their stomach thinking about <laughs> Willie Jefferson coming at you. Yes, they do. Can't blame them. Medvick kicks it away. Janarian Grant waits, takes it at the 42. 40 yard kick. And he is taken down. And once again, excellent field position for Zach Kolaris and the Bombers. Hey, shout out for 9 BMC. Mama, I love you. <laughs> Off the dog, man. Keep stacking. I'm, I'm double checking my calendar. Is it Mother's Day? I don't know. I feel like we're missing out on something. <laughs> yeah. 
Jefferson's now got six sacks in the season to go along with nine knockdowns. Nine knockdowns. Nine knockdowns. Hey! We've got an injury on the field here at IG, and we'll be back in the fourth quarter. A familiar face to the yeah. Canadian Football League there. Absolutely. And a fan of the of the CFL. She's like the Sarah Orleski of country music, you know? Shania, One of the best to do it. Shania Twain's played halftime a couple times in Ottawa and once in Edmonton. Best field position to start a drive for Winnipeg today. They'll hand it off to Augustine, and he takes it down to the rider 35 with the clock ticking inside 13 minutes in the Banjo Bowl. That's Noah Hallett, one of two Hallett brothers on this Bomber squad, having an opportunity to get into the lineup today for the 18th overall pick in 2020. His brother's done a good job sitting back there at the safety position. Yeah, and Brandon Alexander very close to returning to the to that safety spot, the starter. Second and seven for Kolaris. He's got Schoen, who hung on to the ball after he got absolutely popped by Mike Edom. Ball popped up and came right back into his arms, and he held on for his third catch of the game. Yeah, that's that's uh, maturity beyond his years, isn't it? When you can, you take a hit like this. This is the second big hit of this game, by the way. He took one early in the first half, but maintains concentration, only focus on the football after just a hit that stops him in his tracks. Hangs on for a 14-yard gain. Every single possession the Bombers have had today, they have come away with points. That's why they've got wow. 37 of them. Wow. That's execution. They'll toss it to Dembski again. Puts it back up the middle. He's already got a couple of touchdowns today and a classic Nick Dembski run right up the middle down to the 10. A little bit runs a little bit like a blender. You know, like the blades of a blender always going, always spinning and turning and twitching. And like he, he hits this hole and he just bouncing around. Went with the extra O lineman up front too to get a little bit heavier on a running play. Got that ball to the 10, so they'll go first and goal from here. Looking to blow it wide open. Already with a 17-point cushion at home. Four receivers wide side right to Clarence makes the pass to Dembski. Now dumps it off to O'Leary Orange. And it falls incomplete. As he was pushed out of bounds. Adam and Larry Dean, I believe, were involved in that. Larry Dean having a sensational season, coming in with over 70 tackles, three sacks, two interceptions, four tackles for a loss, a couple of forced fumbles. 33 years old and having a fantastic campaign. Well, leads the team in defensive plays made, yeah. Second and goal now. Flags before they can get this ball snapped. That was three-man pressure. Offside, Winnipeg number 88. Five-yard penalty. We're going to replay second down. Let's see if Jason Shivers changes his mind on this three-man pressure. I just think with the way that Zach Kolaros is, is throwing the ball, especially when he gets on the run, Three-man pressure against this old line. We'll see. We'll see what he's got. If he changes it up or not. Second and goal from the 15. Polaris in trouble. Gets it away as he's hammered down. And it falls incomplete. It was A.C. Leonard. Right in his face as he let it fly. Yeah, he, he did he did a couple things. One, he changed from three man straight three man pressure Shivers, and he goes to basically a, a spy technique. So he gets, he's going to go with four man pressure, but AC Leonard right here is going to spy. And what that means is that he doesn't really come up the field. He just waits and he sees where Kolaris is going to try to escape to, and then he closes quickly on him. Mark Leguo out. 
This will be straight away from 22. And that's exactly where he puts it. And the Bombers lead grows to 20. All Winnipeg at the Banjo Bowl with less than 10 to play. You got push-ups. I need 10 push-ups from everybody. <laughs> Two, three, four, five. Great job. Great job. Zero Great last game, right? Thank you. You get your ass up? Full yeah, on push-ups. Okay. You don't say no to Adele, right? Just so invested, so passionate about the game of football. That got her started, but the hard work is why she's as good as she's been. Pajardo over the middle, third in completion of the game, over the head. And, and the hard work is not just the research and talking to players and all that. She, she actually gets down and gets all the cables set up, and sometimes she'll be get, getting her, like, zero ego, great humility through the entire time, doing her research, Working real hard, coiling the cables. She's got to coil up the cables. The best part about that is she won't have to work in the cold anymore. <laughs> right? She has some chilly days on the sideline. Three flags fly here as Fajardo takes that snap with just over really no nine procedure. minutes on the clock. Saskatchewan, number 61, five-yard penalty. Remains second down. Well, we certainly wish her the best, and you know when you when you think about it, you know, it's, to me, as we mentioned in the break, the the earning the respect of the players and the coaches throughout the years, and you know that when through all those halftime interviews that Sarah did throughout her over 15 years, they always named her by name. You know, thank you, Sarah, and then away they went, because she had earned that respect. Pajardo, under pressure, Jefferson gets their ball, pops loose, and Jeff Coat is on it. And Jefferson and Jeff Coates strike again. And the celebration is on at the Banjo Bowl. No time for Cody Fajardo. Willie Jefferson gets there yet again. Take another look at the sack by Willie Jefferson. Just schools Andrew Lauderdale off the edge here. Slaps his arm away around the corner. And to Cody Fajardo, just as he's trying to release the football. Didn't do much about that at the quarterback spot. Fun police. A little subdued right now for the <laughs> atmosphere in this crowd. Fajardo sacked 46 times. This year, nobody else is even remotely close. Drew Brown now into the game at quarterback for Winnipeg. Yeah, and this is a good idea. This is good for Michael O'Shea, the head coach of the team, to give, first of all, gives Drew Brown a couple of reps, real reps in a real game, but the 20 point lead, comfortable with that. Just the execution level of this offense. For the Riders to win this, they needed all three phases, and they just didn't get the defensive phase they needed. We saw Brown in week one come into the game, go three for three for 51 yards, and lead a game-winning drive. This time he's in trouble, and he'll be taken down by DeMarcus Christmas, and that'll bring up... Well, there is a flag on the near side of the field. And is this against the Riders? Looks like it's in the secondary. Illegal contact on receiver, Saskatchewan number zero. This is a 10-yard penalty that will result in a first down. Bombers are over 10 penalties today for over 100 yards. Winnipeg just four flags, 43, so there's a 60-yard swing. But different perspective there when you think about how Zach Kolaris has got the edge and thrown on the run and just what Drew Brown, and that's not a shot at Drew Brown but it gives you perspective on just how good Zach's been this year. Getting outside and throwing on the run, going left. Brown will be throwing to the end zone, looking for the touchdown, and it falls incomplete. Amari Henderson in coverage there, working against O'Leary Orange. Yeah, he did a nice job. He, you know, I know the deficit, probably too much to overcome here, but 
you know, when, in these type of situations, you want to just continue to work hard because all these plays are on video and you want to show that you're not giving up. And that's just great play by Henderson to turn into the receiver, turn up and fight, fight through his hands to the ball. Mari Henderson, first year rider out of Wake Forest with Miami south of the border last year, Jacksonville the year before that. Second and ten for Brown. Looks to the end zone again. And that one will fall incomplete as well. And that'll bring up third and ten for Winnipeg. But again, you know, this is this is good playing time for for Drew Brown. And it takes Zach Kolaris out of harm's way. And you know, when I say that, we've seen many, many times where head coaches I think I think. O'Shea's going to challenge. He is going to challenge. Did look like just as the receiver entered the end zone, it's held up a little bit. Well, there was a reaction from Nick yeah. Dembski. Yeah. I mean, Nick Dembski kind of reacted as if he was grabbed, but. Winnipeg is challenging the free. Winnipeg is challenging the previous play for defensive pass interference on their receiver number 10. Little tug, ever so slightly. Yeah. Again, I. In super slow mo, it looks way worse. And you know, I know people say, "Oh, he's talking about the riders," so, or he's a DB. So that's you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just calling the way I see it. Watch it, watch it, regular speed, and you know, it, it may be time for oven mitts. For some of the DBs, uh, they don't do it at all. But in regular speed, it's. You can see it, but does it change anything on the play? Well, I guess is that what you're saying? Yeah. It does it. Does it, it? I mean, it's enough of a grab when you grab the jersey that you put yeah. it in the hands of the official. Let's get the official ruling down on the field. After review, there is defensive pass interference, Saskatchewan number zero. The foul occurred in goal. The ball will be placed on the one yard line and a first step. Remember Dan Durazio, an old offensive line coach, used to practice with his offensive line in oven mitts, so they couldn't grab. And you know, maybe it's time for oven mitts, because you know, it, it was all it was nothing in real time. It really didn't even look like it changed the direction of Nick Dembski's route, which is really sort of the standard for PI. But because he grabs some jersey and the jersey comes off the, the, the body for even a split second, that's enough to put it in the hands of the officials and get the call. Prukop into the game looking to tack on a few more, and he will. Touchdown Bombers. And the beat down at the Banjo Bowl is out in full force. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, this is the toughest game for the Riders to win in the regular season, bar none. It's always a massive crowd. It's often on the heels of a win in Labor Day, which didn't happen this year, but there have been some lopsided scores in this game, and I'll go back in time and remember back in the old days a 56-3 or something like that. On the wrong end of one of those is not fun. Legio. Knocks it home, and Winnipeg's on top, 47 to 20. Well, pretty chilly last year in the West Final, and Zach Kolaris was there, and he hung around to chat with our Sarah Orleski. Here's what he had to say about that. When you're the quarterback or somebody you know who made a play in the game, you got to stay and do the TSN interview afterwards as well. Well, I, I mean, I was, my teeth were right, like just chattering. And uh, I, I stayed out there. Sarah asked me to stay out there and, and do the interview with her. And there, nobody else I would have stayed out there to do the interview for. I'll tell you that. I would have told Darren or whoever, tell them to find somebody else. I'm going to the locker room. But I have so much respect for Sarah. 
Take that, Shinetti and Farhan. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else, he wasn't doing the interview. But he did it for Sarah. And we've had some great clips from a lot of the star players across the league that have said basically the same thing. Just the respect they have for her, and her knowledge and passion of Canadian football. Now she moves into hockey, which is cool, and we wish her the best in her new job with the Winnipeg Jets. But I think it's fair to say fan favorite across this country. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's a discussion. <laughs> On the return, and Hickson's taken down just outside the 40. By the way, Winnipeg, we got a QB change here. Dolagala's going to come to the game. Winnipeg so far in this game, touchdown, 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 field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown. That's their drive so far. Absolutely ridiculous. Against a good defense. Against well, yeah. a very good defense. We said, you know, they've got some guys who aren't feeling well on the offensive side of the ball. They do have one guy missing. Jeremy Clark did play on the defensive side of the ball. And who knows? I mean, some of the guys not might be failing. They might not be feeling well, but yeah. this Riders defense has been very good so far this year. And they've been walked all over so far tonight. Bolagala into the game. Has a completion reaching back for it was Evans, but he was able to hang on before he was wrapped up by Winston Rose. So that's it for Cody Fajardo on the night. And as you mentioned earlier, just two incompletions for Fajardo all night long, or three now. Yeah, 15 of 18. But just 124 yards, no interceptions. Didn't have a chance to get the ball very often with Winnipeg dominating possession. Now almost a deflection for an interception, but multiple flags there as Hardy was hit before that ball arrived. That'll move the Riders down the field. Defensive pass interference, Winnipeg number 31. Point of the infraction, automatic, automatic first down. Zone look, Hallett stepping up, got there early. Oh, it was actually home. Evan Holm having an opportunity to play here in place of Nick Taylor, who left the game in the first half, did not return. Dola Gala now finds Kyron Moore, and Moore is eventually tracked down and taken out of bounds by Dietrich Nichols. Six-yard pickup for Kyron Moore. First catch of the half for Moore, who had five in the first half of this football game. And he had seven last week. It's been really nice getting Kyron Moore back into this offense. Second and four. Dola Gala, tight window, and it falls incomplete. He was looking right back to Moore, and Moore couldn't hang on. That'll bring up third and four. And again, we didn't see Keon Schaefer-Baker all night. So he was one of the guys that got hit by the illness, and... Listed as a starter, was not able to get into the lineup. So, Craig Dickinson, another challenge, another, another tough challenge that they're gonna, this team's going to have to overcome with the great cup in their own backyard. Dolagala needs four. Bombers are going to bring some pressure. He looks down the far side. Oh, and that one in and out of the hands of Shaq Evans. Probably would have been a touchdown. What a great throw by Dolagala. Just just threaded the needle right to him and Shaq knows it. I mean, he's got press and Winston Rose told us he loves playing press coverage, especially when he's got one or just two on the sideline. He takes care of his guy and Nichols chases. Look at the hole between he and Adam Big Hill. Should have been it right away. Should have been he? cut. Yeah. Yep. Still with his head down as he walks down the sideline. Fajardo goes over to Give him a bump. <laughs> Drew Brown at the helm for the Bombers. Second offensive possession for him. They'll hand it off to Brady Oliveira. And Oliveira back to the line of scrimmage at the most. Well, this kind of game just gives us a little bit more time to to congratulate and thank our colleague. I, you know, it's 15 years. You think about 
what we mentioned at the quarter change with Sarah with her just how she's inspired so many young women and young girls that are coming up thinking you know what I could do it why not me can be a great reporter earn great respect and and do it you know I think that what was it's been so unique with Sarah throughout her career has been the uh, just the, the the way that she has approached it to learn the game ask as many questions as she can as she can she had great knowledge coming in already on her own but rather to prove how much she knew to talk to the players learn the game is now talking to all the fans and you know doing it that way you know earning their respect outstanding we've hit the three minute mark on Orleski's time at TSN Welcome back to IG Field, and when you're with a company for a decade and a half, you're going to work with a lot of different people, both on our staff and with the players. And let's see what Cody Fajardo has to say about not working anymore with Sarah Orleski moving forward. I miss those sit-downs with her, talking about more than just football, talking about my life. Sometimes people just ask you about football and you feel like, oh, I'm just a football player. With Sarah, you feel like a human being, and, and that's the best way, I think, to put it. Is she makes you really feel uh, wanted, and uh, she's incredibly talented at what she does. No doubt about that. And that's a good saying right there, too. You know, watching the league on the outside for a long time, I knew, I could just tell from a broadcast perspective, she's really good at her job. Right. But I didn't know how good she was at her job until, until I got, got on the it. team. Yeah. I was like, holy smokes. First punt of the day for bo the Bombers with 2.40 to go, in case you're wondering how this game has gone. Mario Alford takes it at the 35, wrapped up immediately downfield. While the ball was in the air. Let's get to your Advil dual action play of the game. And lots to choose from when it comes to the Bombers, but maybe none better than this. Uh, just the athleticism at the end to get to the cone. And by the way, he did touch the cone just barely. That was a touchdown. Complete vertical to get there. Great play by Rashid Bailey to end the first half and extend the lead, a lead they have not relinquished, not even close. His fourth touchdown of the season. Putting a smile on the face of many Bombers fans here tonight. He had five touchdowns last year. They'll hand it off to Hickson. Nice push ahead again from Frankie Hickson. That's just his 10th carry of the ball game. That one will go for seven yards for the riders well i i'm gonna buy a ticket to see more at 20. i i don't care who he's playing or where he's playing frankie hickson's a player i he's worth the price of admission to me Dolagala near side not enough juice on it and it falls incomplete in front of shaq evans we talked to cody fajardo about frankie hickson and he says, you know how you always hear that he gives 110%, yet he takes it literally. <laughs> there is actually an extra 10% <laughs> when it comes to number 20. A lot of people say they do that, <laughs> but Cody was like, no, this guy does it. Yeah, the math doesn't work out in yeah. real life, but apparently with Frankie Hickson, he can get to that extra 10. There's a completion on third down, and that'll be enough to keep the Riders' offense on the field. Well, Hickson was away from football for a few years and then decided he wanted to get back into it. And he told us this week, you know, how he how much how he approaches the game differently now that he's got it back as opposed to when he didn't have it or took a lot for granted prior to being away from the yeah, game. perspective, right? Yeah. I think we all got a little bit of that when we missed the season because of the pandemic. Far side Dola Gala, and that'll be intercepted on the far sideline by Rose, and he's gonna take it back down to the 25. And the Bombers defense does it again. Uh, 
What do they got planned in there? They look like they got something going on for celebration time. It's intended for Shaq Evans. Just a little bit too many chop steps coming out of his break, and that gave the that was the indicator to a veteran corner in Winston Rose, who's now going to want to be zooming us every week. <laughs> Saskatchewan is challenging the previous play for defensive pass interference. The play will be reviewed. Well, it would might be. as well try it. Yeah, I was going to say, is it on? Right there, kind of reaching around him. We'll have to get another. We we'll have to get another look at it. Well, if it's the challenge is pass interference, not illegal contact, so it has to be where the ball was thrown, yeah. which was to Shaq Evans. Little contact, little contact there. Oof. Well, you know, here's what I would say about that one and the one that they did overturn. I'd rather they not throw the flag for those. Just let that that type let, of play play out. Let that yeah. kind of thing happen. And not necessarily these two teams or these two plays in particular, but that kind of thing. You know, I, I know within the standard you can find it. But I just. We need to lower the amount of penalty flags. And you let that little stuff go. Let's find out what the call is on the field. After review. The ruling on the field stands. Saskatchewan has charged their final timeout. Yeah, I think in fairness, what Craig Dickinson was looking at was, first of all, it's desperate, you know, just might nothing as well. Nothing to lose. Nothing yeah. to lose. But secondly, it, it was beyond five yards. And you're really, as a DB, only supposed to contact at five yards. But again, there's going to be bumping and pushing and hand fighting and things down the field. That's, that's part of the game. Another possession for the Bombers, and it's Augustine right up the middle. You know, the one thing about we working with Sarah all the years and driving to, the, to and from the park, and whenever anyone in the car or in a meeting or wherever we were would talk about the weather, boy, she, her ears per, <laughs> per, <laughs> her, her ears would perk up. What did you say about the weather? What, what's the weather going to be down there? And it's been, you know, all these years and the different... You know, we play football in any weather pretty much unless there's lightning in the area. And man, I remember many, many a game where she's been freezing on the sideline or pouring rain on <laughs> and you're you're up in the booth just living living the good life, eh? Yeah, we're we're <laughs> all protected in the booth. Remember back in Guelph with <laughs> Eastern semifinal and the wind is howling through there and It's just <laughs> freezing cold. But hey, not everybody can be sideline reporter in this game, Siri. <laughs> Always on point when it came to weather. Why would you ever <laughs> want to give up that sweet gig, you know? It's amazing. We'll tuck it back into the belly of Augustine. Right now, the Bombers are 47 points. That's a third most points ever scored in a banjo bowl. Battle of Alberta around the corner. Don't, don't go anywhere. You're settled in. You got your beverages. You got all your snacks. You're, we're just, we're, we got another third to go. I was going to say, you're talking about me in 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Pretty exactly. Much, right? Locking in to Give watch. Give me the beverages. Give me the snacks. Let's watch the Battle of Alberta, which... I thought Cornelius pushed, pushed Calgary a little yeah. bit last week. Yeah. Interested to see what they could do at home where the Elks look for that elusive home victory. Brown to his right, to the end zone. Touchdown for good measure. Don't show his 10th of the season, tying a Bombers rookie record. 53-20 Winnipeg on top. And it's one of those games in Hardwick. Been carrying around a couple of guys with touchdowns. First career passing touchdown for that man, number six in blue. And a nice throw to show. Yeah, it really was. Pulling from the Zach Kolaros playbook, throwing on the run, getting outside. 
Number 10 for Dalton Schoen ties a bomber record. Congratulations. You got to go back to 1951. Neil Armstrong, not that Neil Armstrong. <laughs> 51, 1951, the last Bomber rookie to have 10 touchdowns in a season. And the Bombers put 50 plus on the board. Banjo Bowl record was 55. Yeah, I was in that one. I don't want to bring it up. Let's not bring it up. Are you sure? Up. Yeah, I think I was in that one. Let's not bring that one up. Anyway, 54 for Winnipeg here tonight. How do you still go back to when the Riders were marching when it was third and one and they rolled yes, Fajardo out, turned it over late in the quarter. Winnipeg marched down the field and it was pretty much good night at that point. Have not been stopped since. Yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers now improved to 12 and one on the season. Defending back to back champion. They'd already clinched they a playoff spot. Clinched a playoff spot already. And I know the stats guys are going to be working on when first in the division is and home field in the final is clinched. That can't be far away either. But man, they, this 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 juggernaut keeps rolling. They're seven and zero on the road. Not that that'll necessarily matter until maybe the Great Cup. But now they're seven and zero against the West as well. Nobody in the division has touched them yet. Calgary's come close. These Riders have come close. But Ottawa the came, came close early in the year. Found a way. Some of the Montreal Alouettes are saying, "Look at us! <laughs> Look at us!" <laughs> yeah. They came out here and won a won a tight one at IG Field. One that the Bombers put themselves in a position to win. Well, you know, it's funny you say that because if you're Montreal, you are saying that. Yeah. And they're fighting for a playoff spot. And you're saying we beat that team, that 12 and one team over there, we beat them. You know, and it, it would it would be a great cup matchup for Montreal to to get there. They got a lot of work to do, but I just man, this this bomber team yet another win in a different way. Well, we we said their last two victories by a combined four points, two points, two points today not the case a 34 point victory is their most lopsided advantage of the entire season as the crowd at ig field will come to the feet to cheer home their winnipeg blue bombers and that standing ovation is partly for the team partly for michael o'shea and partly for our sarah orleski in her last game tonight 30,000 at halftime on their feet for Sarah as well. As it was a banjo bowl beatdown for the Bombers. And they remain the hunted in the Canadian Football League. And the Riders go back 